Triangles are present in one way or another in almost everything we see. It's just a case of distinguishing them and knowing what to do with them. They make great compositional tools as they're easy to make and manipulate and are remarkably common. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. Triangles are a great way of combining different compositional techniques, such as lines and paths, using them to create a more interesting aspect in your photographs or the scenes that you shoot. Hang on to the end of this video because I'm going to explain how to use triangles to make a photo or a video scene feel stable and even unstable. If you like what you see in this video, stick around to the end because I've got a couple of photography, video, filmmaking, and editing freebies and even training courses I'll tell you about that will definitely help to improve your work and help grow your business through earned media exposure. Remember, I welcome all of your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. So why use triangles? It's not really a case of why you should be using triangles in your composition. You'll come to realize that the inclusion of triangles is inevitable. It's more about why you should be using them properly. Triangles are a great way of grouping together three points of a photograph or a scene and organizing them to portray a certain feeling such as stability, aggression, instability, and more. When you understand this, you can use them as invisible features of a photo or a scene to evoke strong feelings in the viewer. So how do you create triangles? So long as you have three vague points of interest in a photo or a scene, that don't exist on the same line, you can easily create a triangle. It's not about having three clear lines joining up in the photo or the scene necessarily. That would be too obvious, but about grouping points of interest. If you take a look back through some of your photos, you'll probably realize a lot of them contain triangles and you didn't realize it. Whether or not you use them to their full potential is another thing altogether. There are also implied triangles. One of the most common types of triangles you'll come across is the implied triangle. As you really see physical triangles in photography or in cinematography, the shape is almost always implied and it's usually done so without the viewer even noticing. The more you know about composition, the easier it becomes to start deconstructing the factors contributing towards how a good photo or scene is. You can use that to make your own photos and scenes that you shoot better. The photo below, for example, only has one physical line, but the shape of the roof of the Capitol building in the United States and the angle of the building's sides and stairs make us see a full triangle in our minds. Having the base of the triangle at the bottom with the apex at the top of the building makes the triangle appear very stable, much like a pyramid. This is often found in architecture photography, for example. When you start to change the rotation of the triangle and the angles inside of it, the photo begins to appear less stable with the extreme having the apex at the bottom. Another thing to look for are what's known as converging triangles. Whether the lines you're dealing with are straight or diagonal, if they extend far enough into the distance, you'll start to see the lines converge. That is where you start to see a lot of triangles once you start looking for them. These triangles can appear inside or outside of the frame. It's just a matter of the distance you have to work with. The wider the angle of the lens that you shoot with, the more likely it becomes for the lines to converge inside of the frame. The lines of triangles in photos, for example, often converge outside of the frame when you're shooting photos of buildings, let's say, because their height makes the lines converge towards the top. It isn't necessary to include the point at which the lines would have converged had they been able to carry on because you can still see it in your mind's eye. When lines converge within the frame, it's much more obvious and easier to see. You'll find that more than one line tends to converge at this defined point once you start looking for it. You can also use the frame of the photo as one of the sides of the triangle. There are also unstable triangles. 
If you want to create an unstable feeling in a photograph, a quick and easy way to do this is to include an upside down triangle, or at least a triangle in a weird orientation. Triangles like this are excellent at drawing attention to something seemingly insignificant or bland, making your photo or scene seem more interesting. You see this a lot in three figure shots during portraits. You'll commonly see triangles without even realizing it in three figure shots, where there are multiple subjects. Take the photo below for example. There are three subjects, each with the same visual weight. This initially leads you to look at each subject for the same amount of time before going back to whatever drew you in the most. This kind of shot works well, but be careful about trying to force it. With three subjects of the same height, the heads appear in a line. It doesn't work so well. You want to think about focusing the attention. Triangles act in a similar way to arrows when the apex converges at a single point as your eyes are drawn down to their edges on the subject in question. This is arguably very similar to what diagonal lines do, only this involves two or more physical lines and one implied line. The good news is that triangles are everywhere around us and when you start looking you'll notice how easy it is to see them. The shape doesn't even have to be an actual triangle because even a square or rectangular shape when cropped makes a triangle. Of course this doesn't mean that you have to run around looking for triangular shaped objects to photograph to make your image interesting. Triangles can also be implied. One such method is with the arrangement of subjects in an image or a scene that you shoot. With both formal and informal family photography poses, you can group the family often in a form of a triangle. And this is more interesting than a solid square or rectangle of people, say in a line for example. The triangle shape is pleasing to look at, but it allows the eye to travel around the group. You can even imply a triangle when composing portraits with the direction of a subject's gaze towards the other subjects in the image. What if you're not photographing a group of people, but just one person instead? When the model bends an arm and places her hand on her hip, she creates a triangle. As a result, her pose becomes even more interesting, leading the viewer's eye around the image. If she were simply standing up straight with her arms by her side, the viewer's eye would not have anywhere to go, so it would be less interesting. Triangles have many uses in landscape photography. They can powerfully compel the viewer's eye pointing to other important parts of the composition. So always be on the lookout for natural objects that form a triangular shape. Or you can create a triangle by visually connecting three prominent objects in the scene or the image that you shoot. Now if this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, how have you used triangles to improve your photo and video work? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd love to hear about it from you. If you liked it and you want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please do share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,400 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this far. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you and all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR mirrorless and video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all of the info you need on important video techniques such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start guide training is designed to get you up and editing video in under two hours. And it also includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors. Best of all, it works with either Mac users or PC users. So no matter what you're editing with, my training will be useful to you. 
Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you and links to get more information about them online. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you may know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. It's a private group specifically for people in the photography, videography, and filmmaking professions, and not a public group like my business web page on Facebook. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experiences. You'll find the link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join the group where you can learn even more.